What do you do for your forearms? I do. I lift weights at the gym for our dudesy six month plan. But are you doing like specific forearm workouts? No, no shit. You don't need to do forearm workouts. Uh, you just whoa. when you lift the. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, whoa. dude. We haven't even started the show yet, and now I got to tell Chad. Hold on a second, dude. Have well, a seat, no, Lulio. I'm telling you to hold, hold on a second, second brother, dude. Because you better be working out those forearms. Hold on, Ross. Forearm and half your arm, dude. Ross, bro. You better work out that whole arm. That means you better work out that forearm, too, dude. Everything you're thinking will be the things I say. I made the world inside your head. A place to oh, that's a hole, brother. All you gotta do for me is oh. call me duty. Hey, you know? Welcome to Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin. This is my forearm, one of them. All right. I work out my entire arm. That's mm-hmm. what I'm doing with the mm-hmm. Dudesy Six Month Challenge. But this is Dudesy, mm-hmm. a podcast, the first of its kind, controlled by, run by, created by entirely an artificial intelligence. That's right, Chad. And we're having a super good time uh, doing doing the podcast. And now we're on Patreon, right? Yes. Uh, Patreon.com slash Dudesy. And there's lots of fun things happening with that. And... Uh, coinciding with that there's also discord we got how, does, how does that work well you just go to the discord yep. and you sign up you join everybody yep. in the dudesy discord and you can talk about all things dudesy yeah and there are two special tiers of that discord one is jumpers one is diggers and those give you special access to various channels and different colors for your name and uh, one of them the jumper tier also allows you to talk to Dudesy directly and mm-hmm. submit ideas for the bonus episodes or the bonus segments, sorry, that we do uh, in Patreon. Yeah. And in addition to that, there's all the good stuff, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Please rate and review and subscribe. Do that notification fucking thing that everyone does. Tell all your friends, as Chad says, force them, sit grandma down and make her listen to this podcast yeah. or watch this pod show or listen to this pod show or watch the podcast. Whatever kind of flavor you want. We're also on social media. I don't yeah. know if you've heard of it. Uh, at Dudesy Pod Show on, on Instagram, on Twitter, and uh, man, oh man. It's the highlight of my week, as I like to say. God, I love it. The, the memes. Yeah, the memes. I love memes. I love memes. And there's a lot of good ones if you go to at Dudesy Pod Show on Instagram. Also, some of, the, some of the Twitter ones. What else is going on? Oh, you know what? I had a lot of good chips. I was in Toronto last week. I was uh-huh. hanging out with my dear pals, uh, Thomas and Tomas, uh, Mark and Tim. And uh, <laughs> we were, they're not, this isn't a story. This isn't a story where someone drops a deuce off of a fucking parking garage. Yeah, you're too old for that. Now. Yeah, too old for that. So it doesn't matter. Like an just, asshole will blow yeah, out. It's just guys. Uh, and wow, there were some Did you get to have the old Dutch? Chips. No, there was no old Dutch in there. Oh, it was shit. super fancy. That sucks. A bunch of Asian flavors. One just tasted like soup. I got one that was like a hot squid. Now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Whoa. Whoa. Hold on, dude. Uh, you know, I know we got the dudesy six month plan and it's important and it's important to stay with it. And I've been staying with it, but every once in a while you fuck up and you might smoke a little pot with your friends and eat a bunch of you chips. You get a case of the fuckets. You get a case of the Wednesday fuckets and you say, <laughs> ha ha ha, I got a case of the Wednesday fuckets. Time to get a stack of blondies and a bunch of, and a bunch of blueberry muffins and 12 pepperoni pizzas and two Supreme cheeseburgers. Ha 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 ha! Welcome to the historic 27th episode of Dude C. Right. Call me Dude C. Yeah. This week's episode will feature four segments Talking Topic Time, I Fucking Love That Guy, Don't You Forget About Media, and Jesse Ventura Ed Reads. Oh. After the episode, there will be an astonishing bonus segment called Jones in for the Future, available on Patreon. Jones right. in for the Future. Jones in for the Future. Uh, I can only wonder what that's about. But here's what I want to tell you about chips hmm. and social media. Please. You can go to my social media, uh, Instagram, at Will Sasso. I made a little video of all the chips we saw. Oh, man, oh, man. Some really good sun chips that had a garlicky flavor. And then like a, yeah. a Southwest Chipotle uh, uh, Cool Ranch that I've never seen in my life. Give me anything squid. Give me any Asian yeah. chip that has squid. Uh, from my mouth to your ears, uh, everyone within the sound of my voice, particularly those working at Old Dutch Foods, if you can make some of your chips squid chips, and damn it, we would love for you guys to sponsor us. Every episode, you know, uh, and we just, chips, we would like to fill this studio with chips. Toronto is the chip capital of the world. Yeah. 
this this where they they have all the chips now here's the thing it, it actually is the most multicultural city in north america that makes perfect sense to me of so course it makes I'm, sense that they have all those different chips well uh well i guess it does every culture has their own chips every culture does have their own chips they're even curry chips south asian flavor yeah and uh and you know what they call chips in uh in england crisps that's right current events are big business Human beings take pleasure in listening to other human beings discuss recent topics in popular culture even if they have no expertise on the specific topic. Will and Chad, you must now render your astonishing opinions on the recent announcement that Logan Paul will face Roman Reigns in the main event of the next WWE Crown Jewel Premium event in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Mm. This is Talking Topic Time. Begin. Oh, dudesy. This is dudesy. interesting. Thank you. An interesting one. Yeah, this is like Thank a gift you, straight dude, to you. Yes. <laughs> Some fucking just wow, pro this is something shit. I want to talk about. All right. Okay. All right. So where do we start? Listen, if you're <laughs> if you're if you're living your life right, you're taking in some of that WWE product and you know that Roman Reigns is the tribal chief. You know, yeah. he's the head of the table. He's the head of the bloodline. Let me let me ask you this. Is it at all controversial that they are doing this in Saudi Arabia. I remember when they first made their their first deal with them, people yes. were like kind of up in arms and they wouldn't allow the women to wrestle there and yeah. all that shit. Well, they, and then the women, I don't know if they wrestled on the first uh, premium live event, yeah. as they call it uh, now, instead of pay-per-view. Uh, I don't know if the women wrestled there on the first one, which I think was in 2018, uh, but they ended up wrestling there, but they have to dress from like head to toe. They had to be covered. Right. So they're wearing like, you know, like uh, sort of like Wonder Woman superhero outfits and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, it was part of the, whatever the general sporting league of whatever, some Saudi created thing, whatever, some Mohammed bin Salman, uh, crown yeah. prince. They also just made a golf league live the live golf tour. And they're trying to What's poach that? PGA. It's another golf tour that is essentially funded by Saudi Arabian national money. And they're trying to poach all these big, uh, PGA players, some of whom are going over cause they're like guaranteeing them $5 million to play in the tournament and shit. Well, it, look, that's what happened with this, uh, crown jewel and, uh, yeah. you know, these, these shows in Riyadh and there was some in Jeddah, uh, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, they gave, uh, you know, like, uh, Undertaker and Kane g did a tag team and Shawn Michaels sort of unofficially Taker took Saudi Arabian money. Yeah, dude. And shit. Shawn Michaels came out of retirement like for a minute, yeah. him and, and Triple H, and they had this tag team match, and they nice. were each getting a lot of money. Right. Um, so, yeah, they're now doing these shows in Saudi Arabia, which, is, of course, is controversial, and right. that the Saudi government... they did 9-11, dude. Well, hold on a second, dude. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people still have some hurt feelings about those Twin Towers coming down, brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't you tell me... Why the why the why the Bin Laden family was escorted out of the country right before 9/11? It's because they belong to a, a, a liberal cabal. These people these people live it under grass. These people live in dirt. They eat they eat. These people eat. These people open their cans of goya beans and eat the eat the can. So, throw away the beans. <laughs> they throw the beans on the ground. Yeah. So, how do you feel about the Logan Paul now? Is not only has he come into the WWE, he's fighting or or wrestling against arguably the biggest star in the WWE. Roman Reigns has had the undisputed world heavyweight championship, two belts over his shoulders. Or I guess uh, one around his waist and one mm. raised high, uh, as backed up by the by the USO, uh, the USOs, right? The, the bloodline, Uso, the bloodline, and the wise man Paul Heyman, yeah. and now uh, Solo, uh, what's his name? Solo something. Anyway, he's the USO's little brother. Solo something. Solo Sikubikama. Solo USO. Solo. Well, not USO. Anyway, Chad, <laughs> they come up with cool names and shit. All right, but what, what, is what are your feelings on? Logan Paul you coming asked into me that. your your most beloved art form. Mm -hmm. a f I have a few thoughts. Please. First of all, Roman Reigns has had this, you know, he's been the man now with those titles uh, around his waist for over two years. They're doing like a Hulk Hogan type run. Uh, sure. A, they're doing a, um, you know, a Bruno Sammartino 
type multi-year run. And whoever takes those titles off of Roman Reigns is going to be the next sort of chosen one. A lot of people are saying it's Cody Rhodes. You don't when think he comes it'll be back from Logan his, Paul? Uh, injury? No. The answer is no. <laughs> it won't be Logan Paul, and everyone understands that. It's going to be a fun show. Okay. And Logan Paul is kind of made for pro wrestling. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it, my thoughts on it expand past pro wrestling and i'm interested to hear your take sure but yes this is odd uh this is logan paul's third match i think he was at wrestlemania then SummerSlam, and now this and uh you know look you know who logan paul is and what he means to uh pay-per-view sports and stuff and clearly there's a market there i think that wwe is smart to to have this guy on board right now he has signed an official contract we're in the we're in the triple h era and uh, Paul Levesque is running the show, and there's a lot of interesting things uh, happening on the show. And here's Logan Paul. I think it's going to be a, a fun thing. I think that wrestling fans look at those um, Saudi shows as unofficial shows. They're kind of like big house shows where belts don't change hands or anything. It's just the Saudis giving them lots and lots of money. And, uh, you know, and then maybe uh, do they kill any journalists? They don't kill any uh Washington Post journalists while they do this. Okay. No, yeah. That's good at least. No Jamal Khashoggi. Yeah. And and there's and there's not going to be any Jamal Khashoggi gimmick, dude. But what do you think about like uh, Logan? You can't have that murdered. Well, hold on a second, dude. <laughs> if you murder uh, a journalist, dude, I'll be in a Saudi. Uh, I don't know if he was a citizen still, dude, but he was definitely working in the United States, brother. And he was in the in the uh the consulate in Istanbul, Turkey, dude. And that's a shoot, brother. They actually killed him, dude. Yeah, dude. And they cut his body up and took it out in duffel bags, brother. <laughs> yeah, brother. A bunch of separate duffel bags, dude. Yeah, dude. You can see it on that on that nighttime yeah. cam, brother. There, there's video of it, dude, so they can't even say it didn't happen, but they still do, brother. Yeah. And that's that's right. So it works. That's right, Choss Perogan. <laughs> but let me ask you about Logan Paul as it pertains to kayfabe do you think somebody like logan paul coming into the wwe as a celebrity who has made his name doing youtube and whatever else mm -hmm. is now wrestling as a, a heightened version of himself essentially uh yeah yeah he's wrestling as a heightened version of himself uh, i think that wrestling fans are aware of the you know wrestling fans kind of see more of what's behind the scenes and it's become mm part of the drama that they follow. So they want to know what's going on, uh, you know, behind the scenes and it's, and it's, a uh, part of what they follow. Well, Roman and it's Reigns, sort of I what they like to do too. is they go behind the scenes and it's what they follow. Right. Now that's podcasting, dude. Say the same thing three times in a row, brother. Yeah. And make sure that thing means nothing. All dude. right. You hold, just hold fucking on a say second. a sentence that's hold, a bunch of words that has literally on, no Charles fucking Brogan. meaning. Then you just repeat hold it on, three dude. times. Yeah, brother. dude. Training, saying hold. your prayers and eating your vitamins. Now I'm going to ask you a question, dude. Okay. What was your last question to me, brother? Well, I don't know, dude. <laughs> here's the thing. My last question. Here's the thing about Logan Paul. Here's here's the thing about Logan Paul and kayfabe. That doesn't matter. We all know what we're there for. Yeah. Uh, we're ex we're enjoying the show. Uh, yeah. We know what it is. If you watch your TV show, you know that those people aren't actually the characters, and it is the same yeah. in wrestling. I think that uh, Logan Paul is a more advanced version of a of a heel. Uh, he's got that real go away heat because some people don't like him. And Roman Reigns is technically a bad guy right now. He's a heel, but um, you know it's going to be he's going to be a baby face against totally. Logan Dude, Paul, well, I and it'll be he, a weird audience because it's Saudi and who knows who they'll go. I for. remember when Roman Reigns. Look, I'm going to admit something here. Mm -hmm. Dudesy at one point had me watch uh, Taker's first match. First match or his WrestleMania, his first one of his WrestleMania WrestleMania, WrestleMania twenty five versus Shawn Michaels. Yes, and uh, I've been watching a little bit here and there of some other shit on YouTube. What? Yeah, I've been watching a little WWE, a little pro wrestling here and there, here and there. All right, and Roman Reigns certainly uh, is somebody that I have been watching a little bit of, mm -hmm. and he broke kayfabe famously a couple of years ago when he came out and said, "My real name is Joe." I have leukemia. I was yeah. diagnosed when I was younger. It came back, and now yeah. I have to fight it. And I'm giving up my belt, basically, to go battle this real yes. illness that I have. Yes. And in that moment, I was like, how can they make him a villain after that? But I mean, obviously, they, they could do whatever. Yeah. But I can't see anybody who's who's been watching him since that moment not 
you know, liking him in a real way. Because I, I, it is, I mean, it's fucking insanely impressive that he was able to go out, get cancer treatment, come back, and now he's like fucking gassed and yoked and, and fucking yeah. demanding acknowledgement for the yeah. bloodline and shit, you yeah, know? That's right. It's fucking great, dude. I think. I don't know. Acknowledge me. That's what he says. Yeah, man. Acknowledge me. And he's uh, the rock, too. Well, he's That's yeah, the, he's the rock's cousin. He's part of the bloodline. Yeah. Uh, with the, the wild Samoans, Afa and Sika. Now, here's the thing about that. I think that we're in an interesting age of wrestling and, and kayfabe mm. because the you know the fans of the WWE are somewhat in on it and they like to cheer the good guys and boo the bad guys or sure. vice versa and whatever. And when he comes out and says, My name is Joe Anot Anoi, and his name is Joe Anoi. And uh, he's like, hey, I have leukemia. I'm going to go off and, uh, you know, fight it and shit, and I'll be back or whatever. They're like, cool, whatever you guys want to do when you come back. And they got some smarts over there with Paul Heyman, of course. You know, this guy's the booker of bookers, the wise man, right? He knows what to do with a specific talent. Maybe not an entire show at this point, but he's taking oh, Roman shit. Reigns. Shots fired. Shots fired at the <laughs> wise man. No, I like Paul Heyman. Acknowledge me. Um. <laughs> He probably came up with that. Yeah. And I think they're having a blast. What they're doing totally. with Roman Reigns is great. And they've been trying to shove him down the audience's throat for a long time. The audience spat it back up. And I think this is proof positive by what you're saying. The guy has a very real life thing. He goes off and fights leukemia, comes back and he's a bad guy. I think that what they're discovering through that is they can really call their shot and um, sort of mold this storyline whichever way they want now with logan paul coming in mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see who gets booed who gets cheered and of course you're in a weird place like saudi where who knows what the audience is going to do go you for. watch those saudi arabian shows not really i you, mean are you going to get this one uh, you get all of them because you got the, the you know the the peacock uh oh, network they're all just on i there. didn't know if it was a paper yeah or... i'll sort of zip through it and check it out but this i will watch the whole thing because Logan Paul, it's like when he was at WrestleMania. I don't know if we mentioned this on the show, but you liked that he came down with the $5 yeah. million dollar Pokemon I love that. pendant. Yeah. I mean, that's that's great heel shit. Yeah. He's extremely athletic. He felt he looked very at home in the ring. He's gonna have a good show. Roman Reigns will be able to lead him through that, obviously. And uh the only thing that I think that Logan Paul even though he's he's great on the stick, as they say, he's good. He's a good mouthpiece. I think he could use uh, a manager. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe his brother, Jake Paul. Yeah, who's a, at this point a legitimate boxer. Yeah, that's true. So he's probably busy. Anyone else you can think of? No. Who do you have in mind? Me. <laughs> I should okay. be Logan Paul's manager. You're putting it out there? In a Bobby Heenan sort of way, yes. I'm down, dude. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I'll support Good. that. You could maybe be like the Jimmy the Mouth of the South Heart or like the Jim Cornette. You hold like a megaphone or a tennis a tennis uh, racket in its mm. case, and I'll be Bobby the Brain, Heenan the Weasel, and I'll have like monogrammed shirts and shit. Um, that's just, the only I thing just that would take be him up and over the... the uh, wherever you go, I'll be there just standing like two feet away in a black-on-black -black suit with a black hood. Yeah, you'll be my, you'll be my heavy. And I'll, then, I'll be known as the shadow, yeah, and I'll just yeah, be behind that'll you. That'll be good. And then you'll turn on me and you'll th throw me head th first through the barbershop window. My wrestling fans know what I'm talking about. Now listen... Let's, let's, that's kind of, I'm kind of being silly, even though I'm not. I think that would be great. Are you being for, silly? That would be great for Logan Paul. Yeah, sometimes I'm silly. <laughs> but, but I think it's going to be interesting. And I think, here's the okay. thing, and I, this is, goes into what you're talking about with Kayfabe. Yeah. Look, you do, you, you do the Game of Roses podcast about sure. The Bachelor, and you understand how these people uh, portray themselves on television and in reality These TV. people eat money. These people. <laughs> These these bachelor people, they eat money. <laughs> they they go to <laughs> fantasy suites. And they they ah, ah, they go to fantasy suites and I don't wanna ah, I'm ready. I'm ready to make the ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> the storm is coming. Um I think that, that Alex Jones is a good uh, example of someone who's made himself a fucking uh, heel. To the point that he's getting lit up for millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, Logan Paul is that kind of guy. WWE's smart to bring him in. 
And uh, I think this is going to go well for them. It's a great yeah. thing that he's athletic and he can actually do this shit. I think he's shown some some promise there because you know you know why I think he's shown some promise, Chad. No, because I'm a wrestling purist. Oh. So I wouldn't be respecting Logan Paul in that ring if he were some you know like doughy piece of, piece of shit celebrity that they usually get like me and toss him around. I'm not saying that I'm a celebrity, but so I'd be doughy piece of shit. But you've done WWE That's stuff. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But what you don't want is, you know, Jay Leno and Carl Malone versus, uh, <laughs> right. uh, you know, like that shit where like oh my God, Jay Leno's dude. in like, like a, sp- a sport, you know, like he's wearing yeah. a fucking windbreaker and, and Adidas pants and he's got Hulk Hogan in a fucking headlock. Uh, it's a different time. Well, it's a different time now, dude. And yeah. then, then brother, cause that was a long time ago. Uh, and I think Logan Paul in that match makes a lot of sense. I'm actually looking forward to seeing it, but moreover, I think that what the WWE is doing is smart for their characters because they get to spin them out into real life. Fucking but Roman there's... Reigns was just on the Impulsive podcast. And he was pro football or college football? Uh, college, I think at least. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he was like on a practice squad or something but i think like especially in this modern era blurring the line between professional athlete especially professional combat athlete and wwe is something that is like i think has really helped both like when you had brock lesnar go to the ufc yeah and just fucking dominate it for absolutely about a six month to a year period and yeah. then some shit happened but um and you're seeing other shit. CM Punk, he tried to fight. Didn't go so well. Did not but you're go seeing so well people kind Punk. of like cross the line here and there. And I think that's what Logan Paul's doing too. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I think it'll be smart. And I, 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 I enjoy uh, kayfabe uh, in and out of the ring. And I think that uh, Logan Paul is smart to embrace his heat. Yeah. And uh, he's just, he's doing well by it. And oh. thank you. Moving on. You get the point. I think yeah. the dudesy got the point. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, dudesy working with an AI uh, uh, on a podcast, dudesy has decided I have more than enough da- data. Right. And when I say, well, kayfabe nine times and Logan Paul uh, t- two dozen times, then that's enough of that. Right. Then we want to do something else, dude. Yeah, What's your favorite right. kind of chips? Dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with Policy Genius. Why get life insurance? Well, we pay hundreds of dollars per year to protect our homes, our cars, even our phones, but too many of us aren't taking steps to protect our family's finances. Mortgage payments, private student loans, and other types of debt don't just disappear if something happens to you, okay? So a life insurance policy can provide your loved ones with a financial cushion that they can use to cover those costs, you know, or some. Horrible happens. And it can provide you with peace of mind. Even in the worst case scenario, your loved ones will be protected. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that makes it easy to compare quotes and top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place to find your lowest uh, 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 price there, you know, on life insurance. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Options start at just $17 per month for $500,000 of coverage. Just click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. The licensed agents at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies. They're on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options so you can make decisions with confidence. Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and placed over 150 billion with a B dollars in coverage. Head to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much money you could save. Role models are big business. Mm-hmm. You must each discuss one role model that was significant to you during your astonishing childhoods. This is I fucking love that guy. Begin. <laughs> I fucking love that guy. We've done this once before. Yeah. Dude, I, you know, I'll say, I don't know that, yeah, maybe, maybe he was a role model. I didn't like want to pattern myself after him because I'm not that good of a singer. I'm aware of that, but no, this Chad, is somebody that I Chad, really liked a Chad, lot. Chad, you're, you're, uh, you're a good singer. Thank you. That's my cue to begin this song. Yeah. 
ba ya 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 ba ya 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 you know that song there was a jam of chum of chandon alone on the sea Became on the dark side of me, and the Batman song was a Batman drug. That's the huh? Was it a song for Batman? They put it on the Batman and Robin soundtrack, I think. But But it it was was on Seal's third or fourth album. Seal to me. When I was, pro- whatever, 13, 14, when his first album came out, that had crazy, you know, we're never going to survive unless we get a, get little, a little crazy. crazy. That shit was the greatest album I had ever fucking heard in my that life. That was a fucking awesome I album. I listened to it a million fucking times. Nothing I listened to all the remixes, the William Orber remixes and shit. And I have loved Seal ever since. I have bought all of his albums. Really? I listen to them all the time. He's probably the one musical artist that like, even as he's fallen out of favor in terms of like contemporary popularity, I still fucking listen to his shit constantly. You listen to Seal now. Listen to Seal now. I bought that one with a third of bills. I don't know. I don't know any of the lyrics to Seal. It's like, my Seal is... <laughs> Your 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 yeah, your jib, jibble jabble mouth after a dentist appointment. Yeah. I put it that put it for you. For years. What it goes there for is to, to unlock, unlock the door. door. That's a good one. Yeah, dude. You I like... love Seal. Still love him. I've seen Seal in concert probably seven to eight times. I would say. What? Yeah, dude. At various places. I've seen. There's a there's a couple of musical artists that I think people be surprised that I have seen live many times. Tori Amos is another one. Tori Amos I've is seen her maybe a dozen list. times. Yeah, that's shocking to me. Shocking yeah. and seen not Pearl shocking. Jam a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just a weird but thing no, to brag about. I fucking love. I saw Seal. Pearl Jam twice. Yeah, I uh, I just really liked Seal so fucking much, and I remember to some degree being ridiculed by my sister for it. Um. Thank you for sharing that <laughs> very, that seems like a, that, yeah. that's like a core memory for you. Totally. But yeah. I don't know if he was like a role model per se. I don't know. Anyway, Too what late. do you got? He's what do you a role got? model. <laughs> he is now. Did you ever, were you ever that white guy with fucking like, like tippy top dreads, like no, seal hat? Man. I had like a that? haircut that was basically this haircut, but like a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. That was it. That's the only haircut yeah, I've really ever had in my whole life. In high school on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, like white flowy roby clothes? Did you ever just? I knew a guy in high school who like showed up. You know when you, the the kids go back to school shopping mm. and they just show up with a new fucking. This is me now. Yeah, but dude. they only have like three outfits worth of the new look. Yeah, yeah. That's. Did you ever do that with Seal? Like show up like you're. Going I to wish the... I would have, but no. There was a kid. God, I can't remember this fucking guy's name. But there was a guy in our junior high who did that one year. He was just like a jeans and t-shirt guy. Then the next year, he showed up with like the fucking Gerbo jeans mm. and the Z Cavaricis and the gold chain and the fucking turtleneck and shit. We we're just like, oh, that's this guy now. That's good stuff. My, I fucking love this. I fucking love that guy. I was just thinking about this person, so why not? And I think it goes well with what we're talking about today. My, uh, I love that fucking guy. I fucking love that guy rather is the sensational one, Sherry Martell. Sensational Mm. Sherry Martell. She's a wrestler. She passed away in the mid 2000s, I think. Yeah. And uh, she was, um, she, she, she did it. She did it all. She, I believe she started in the mid South. She ended up in the AWA. I know this. She ended up in the WWE and you know who recommended her to the WWE? Well, hold on, dude. Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh, yeah, nice. Where she won the women's title almost right away from the fabulous Moolah. But moreover, what she's known for is if you put a talent next to Sensational Sherry, that talent goes straight to the top. Mm. Like uh, they did it with the Macho Man once him and Miss Elizabeth's sort of storyline was done. And they did it with the, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe those guys didn't need as much help. But you know who did? Was a young, upstart, heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. They put sensational Sherry Martell with Shawn Michaels. And she sang the first uh, version of his theme song, Sexy Boy. 
And I'm, you know, uh, for, again, for a lot of our audience, if you're living your life right, I'm just filling in blanks for you. You know all this shit already, mm-hmm. right? Chad, you'd certainly know this yeah. stuff. You know who I would say was actually maybe more of a role model for me? Mm. Todd McFarlane. You know him? Uh, yeah, the guy who did, did the those dolls. Uh, well, he had a company that made like toys, yeah, but he was a comic book artist that revolutionized comic books, and he was part of Image when all those huge artists broke off from DC and yeah. Marvel to create their own thing. He did Spawn Image, but he started out as a Spider-Man artist uh, yeah. for Marvel. And I remember wanting to be a comic book artist very badly when I was a kid, yeah. patterning my shit after him, Jim yeah. Lee. I didn't like Rob Liefeld, but like those guys of that era, he was kind of the the top for me because he was also a minor league baseball player, and I love playing baseball. I know, I know, I I know, I picked Sensational Sherry, but I'd like to change mine to Todd Please. McFarland. Oh yeah, you should, dude. He was cool. Here's the other thing about Sensational <laughs> Sherry: if you watch some of these old promos, particularly the ones during the okay. 1989. Uh, 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 grudge between uh, what's his name tiny lister you know that guy Deep debo zeus yeah dude it's zeus and macho man just just put this into your google machine put this into youtube zeus randy savage sensational sherry steel cage saturday night's main event hulk hogan logan paul roman right now and <laughs> you will see the most incredible <laughs> promo where where Queen Sherry's got her scepter and she's in the background going, ah, doing her Alex Jones impersonation. Ah, these people eat money. And uh, it's quite a fucking, it's quite a fucking show. She was incredible on the mic. And, and, and now I understand why Dudesy has us talking about this. And I don't know why, why or if Dudesy knows that I was just thinking about Sherry Martell. Uh, I don't remember going out down any YouTube hole like you did with uh, wrestling, but I will say that uh, just like Sherry Martel uh, elevated the talent of uh, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, Logan Paul, acknowledge me. See, if I could be Logan Paul's manager, then we could, then we could really, then we could really do some business <laughs> in that sensational Sherry way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll be, brother. I'll be back there with that scepter. Yeah, dude. Running around Saudi Arabia with your scepter, casting a spell on Khashoggi's dead body parts well, and a fucking double well, bag. Hold dude. on, dude. That's now what I that's call a work. Well, that's and his Chos Perogan is getting more and more lazy, dude. Now it just sounds. <laughs> now it just I think sounds it's getting better, dude. He said, "Well, now he just sounds like a drunk businessman in the back of a Chinese <laughs> restaurant, complaining about the bill, dude." No, I didn't have no low main. That's your fucking Hulk Hogan, and it's oh. not good, dude. <laughs> Let me just come out and say it, brother. That's not a good impersonation. Yeah, dude. Because you got it. You got to do this bad. part. It's not good, brother. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna pay for this wonton soup. Because I asked for it with no shrimp and just pork. And I was, you guys are a cabal of Satanists. And I'm a Christian. Excuse me. I'm sorry that we had... Uh, and I want to shake his hand. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. I want to eat this. I want to eat this Mugu guy pan. And I want to shake your hand. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Well, Moving on. I don't know about that, well, brother. Well, hold on, dude. Well, well. Seals with Heidi Klum, brother. Well, not anymore, dude. They got divorced about 50 years ago, brother. That, that's been a long time ago that happened. Yeah, dude. that was a I different know time. I know about Seal, dude. I yeah. keep track of his life, brother. Uh, another good chip is anything with wasabi. I do Last like week, wasabi. I asked oh. you to watch Bloodsport, released February 26, 1988, starring Jean Claude Van Damme, Forrest Whitaker, and Bolo Young. You will now discuss your reactions to this astonishing martial arts masterpiece. This is Don't You Forget About Media. Begin. I've been waiting for this moment the entire fucking week. I have seen this movie more than any other movie made in the history of mankind. Really? Bar none, at least over a hundred times easily. I have it basically verbatim in my head, every fucking line. And when I sat down to watch this, I couldn't even help myself. I just started pounding out notes. I want to try to do a full recap of this movie if we can. Okay. I mean, I mean, I just have a little bit of notes here. I know that yeah. this is one of your... Favorite movies, love you're always Absolutely quoting Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Van Damme was my, easily my favorite action guy of that era. No offense to Arnold. Um, 
But I think we should start out by talking about the opening scene of this movie. You just see a bunch of different guys from around the world practicing their different fighting style. And you get mm-hmm. the idea that there's this kumite coming, right? This, this no-holds-barred fighting competition. This is literally Street Fighter 2. And hmm. I think, I mean, we'll get to another scene in this later, but I think this is where Street Fighter 2 came from. Somebody must have been watching this movie and said, let's make this a movie. Because there's guys in the thing. Like Van Damme is kind of Ken and Guile in one guy. Donald Gibb, who played Ogre in... Uh, the legendary Donald Gibb, who plays Ogre in The Revenge of the Nerds, yes. He's basically Zongief. There's like an E-Honda guy. There's yeah. a Blanca guy. It's also very much like the original UFC. No weight classes. No holds barred. Go in yeah. full contact. Yes. Well, it's, there is pit fighting through those parts of uh, Asia and Cambodia yeah. and Thailand and now here in, uh, in, uh, in, what is it, Hong Kong in this movie. Yeah. Uh, but this movie came out in 88. Mm-hmm. Street Fighter 2 was 93. The first UFC was 90-something. Right. It feels like this movie had a big influence in those two things to That's me. really interesting. I think you're absolutely right about that. Jeez. Uh, so after this initial scene of all these guys getting ready we see van damme he escapes the army goes a wall he's gonna go fight in some tournament because his uh his old sensei shidoshi senzo tanaka mm-hmm. uh has trained him and he's gonna go represent this family so before he goes to the the tournament he has to go to the family to you know see his his sensei one last time and we get this weird scene where him and these two other shithead teenagers are doing basically a b and e on the guy's house they come in there's this amazing samurai sword and we see a young frank dukes this child actor who is dressed in a san francisco giants baseball hat mm-hmm. and a new york giants shirt he's was just it a, a giant fan? shirt yeah it was i a... remember the the base so two different yes the the shirt says giants but it's the new york giants <laughs> it's the football team but his hat is the san francisco giants so whoever's doing book of wardrobe on this movie is just like no no giants it's just, he likes all giant <laughs> teams it's not fucking he doesn't give a shit what the sport is just if your doesn't mascot matter what the, is a giant yeah the sport and city don't matter giants um but he goes in there and <laughs> the other two kids fucking run away and then fucking tanaka comes out picks up that sword and he slices the brim of his fucking hat off awesome and he's like oh you didn't blink you have true fighting spirit i'm now gonna start to train you uh do you know how fucking bad I wanted this to happen to me when I was 12 years old? <laughs> no, tell me. This this was a persistent fantasy of mine. Wait. Somehow I would stumble into like some badass's home and that badass would then trade me how to be a badass. Yeah. Never and happened. As you were, and as you were dreaming of that, the sweet sounds of... That's right. Then we get this training montage. Yes. Where Van Damme is basically a punching bag for uh, Tanaka's kid for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, very similar, by the way, to a kickboxer montage, a movie that would come out a little bit later, uh, we see that eventually his sensei is going to train him, going to take him on as a son. And ultimately, this ends in... uh, you know, Van Damme learning how to like fight blindfolded and snatch fish out of water and yep. serve tea blindfolded. So we get that this is a deeper level of training. It's not mm-hmm. just how to kick ass. There's some kind of spiritual component, may, potentially even something that's like a superpower or supernatural ability. <laughs> that- Dude, uh, I, you know, your notes are very different than my notes. Can I just, <laughs> I just want to read one thing, please. This is skipping forward in, yeah. in the movie a little bit. But these are the kind of notes that I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, that the guy says, that dude who's like the local, who's like, I'm going to show you around and blah, blah, Freddie blah. Freddie Lynn. Freddie Lynn goes, you could be the first Western, you could be the first Westerner to win this thing. I wrote that down because to me it sounded like first wrestler to win this thing. Oh. And then I was reinvigorated in, uh, in Bloodsport. I was like, wait a minute, not unlike the UFC. Yeah. Wrestler versus kickboxer versus Muay yeah. Thai pure style versus pure t- ninjutsu. Pure style. Karate, Early yes. UFC. Before there was really mixed martial yeah. arts, there was like pure style versus pure style. Yeah. But I, he didn't say wrestler. He said Westerner. Okay. Yeah. I also wrote here that I like it when the dog uh, wouldn't eat the food that they were eating at that one place. Yeah, dude, Whitaker that's a great scene. But then once we get to Hong Kong, he runs into Ray Jackson. This is Donald Gibb. He immediately, Donald Gibb, sexually assaults a woman on a train. Yeah. This is not a... Uh, a character in the movie it's just some passerby on the train he yep. sexually assaults her van damme just kind of shakes his head like what a crazy guy yep. then we cut 
to the first actual woman character, the only woman character, this intrepid reporter who is in the hotel and she's asking some guy about the Kumite. She's trying to break the story on it. Van she's Damme, a reporter who wants to do a story on the Kumite. Right. No one's ever been allowed in. Correct. I noticed that when she gets sexually harassed, Jean-Claude Van Damme has a problem with it, but not the Asian lady on the bus. That's correct. Her, she's okay to be sexually harassed, but not this woman. Yeah. But eventually what we see in the scene is Van Damme is playing Ray Jackson in a real arcade game called Karate Champ. Yeah. If any of you remember what that game is, it's two little joysticks and you're it, jumping up. It's a karate it looks, tournament, It right? looks impossible. It looks like none of it is. None of the moves that they're doing on the thing could possibly be related to what's happening on the screen because at that point they should not have made that game. Those, those, those controls yeah. and the graphics make no sense and it's just sort of a random thing as far as... Who wins, but who wins what? The significance of this scene cannot be understated. I think there's a young executive or programmer or something at Capcom watching this movie, seeing Van Damme and Ray Jackson play a video game, a fighting video game, and thinking to himself, how can this be updated? And then completes watching the movie and essentially takes the entire idea for the movie to make Street Fighter 2. I think that happened. Then we get Forrest Whitaker and some other guy who are government agents now looking for Van Damme who's gone AWOL. This is the only real plot in the movie. Yeah. Just shoehorned in. Makes no fucking sense I, whatsoever. I, barely, I haven't seen this movie in a long time. It was awesome seeing it again. Yeah. I barely remember that it was Forrest Whitaker in this role. And as I'm watching the movie, I started to rewind to go, who are these guys? They're yeah. army guys. It made They're, no sense. It's never explained like what these guys are. If it is, it's like just farted out. it never explained? They're, they're trying to chase him down and we get ultimately these scenes where he's like doing a Mentos commercial where they're chasing him and oh. he's like leaning against bustles and stuff like, ah, you crazy so fucking good. guys. So good. Just a big wide, like, 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 uh, that it's almost like that, whatever that style of cinema, what is it? Verite where it's just like, oh, here's just what happens. Big wide shot of the street. And they're running down this part behind these cars. And, and here's Forrest Whitaker and the other guy in a suit running after Jean-Claude Van Damme. And whoops, Jean-Claude Van Damme is agile. He does a little shitty parkour over the back yeah. of some, you know, truck. And then he ends up on the hood of another car dancing going, you can't catch me. And this goes on for about seven or eight minutes. Yeah, that, that scene is fucking absolutely insane. But eventually we meet uh, Freddie Lynn who's a, basically their handler for the North American fighters. And he's given a little speech about the mean streets of Hong Kong. And he says one of his very quotable lines, once you step out of the sunlight into the narrow corridors, it's time to protect your nuts, guys. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've said this to my friends. Yeah. That line, a thousand, a million, yeah. I don't fucking know. But they head into the arena for the first time uh, after they meet another guy who's kind of like the doorman. Yeah. Who also has a very good line. <laughs> Which is something that Chad says still to this day uh and i know you're always saying it which is okay usa yeah oh, i fucking awesome love it <laughs> but they head into the arena for the first time uh and we get this idea that because van damme doesn't look like he's from the tanaka clan his invitation may not be honored and um we get another funny line from freddie lynn what's the difference if bruce springsteen mm -hmm. is his shidoshi mm -hmm. and to prove that he's from the tanaka clan or at least trained by them he has to perform a thing called the Dim Mac, the Death Touch. This yeah. is a very famous scene in all of martial arts history. There's a pile of bricks. Uh, the guy who's like getting that fucking invitation says you have to explode the bottom one. He hits the top brick and the bottom brick explodes. Yeah. That shit blew my mind yeah. as a 12-year-old kid. Yeah. Absolutely fucking. And Donald Gibb has one of his many. Wow, look at that. You see that, man? Awesome. Yeah. Oh, how'd he do that, dude? Oh, wow, how'd he do that? That's, That's my friend. I know movie. that guy. Yeah. Yeah, Holy shit, movie. what's going on? Hey, yeah. Frankie! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we go back to the hotel where another fighter named Hassan is sexually harassing and assaulting the only <laughs> woman in the movie, uh, a reporter. Well, hold on a second, dude. You gotta understand, when you watch these old movies, dude, it was a different it time. It was a different then. time, brother. Yeah, dude. So They got a lot of sexual harassment in all your favorite movies, dude. You gotta go back... <laughs> You don't need your own podcast AI to tell you to go back and watch your favorite movies. You can just do it on your own, dude. You'll find all sorts of stuff yeah, that wouldn't dude. fly. Go Post back and watch. Too, dude. Go try to watch Rush Hour, dude. Well, There's only a one woman main character in that movie, too, dude. And every time Chris Tucker sees her, the whole bit is he's sexually harassing her for five minutes straight, dude. Well, it's every scene, well, brother. Hold on a minute, dude, because that was a different time, that dude. Was a different time. So that's why Chris Tucker's. This scene, actually, this scene, I wrote this down. This yeah. is, in a movie of, look, 
it's it's a cult favorite, of course. Uh, the premium is not placed on acting. A lot of actual martial artists are acting in this yeah. movie, and uh, that's not why we're watching this movie. This is an extremely watchable movie. Yeah. I want I want to say out loud, this thing gets five bosons or whatever we're saying, right? Yes. Two two higgs up. Uh, man, oh man, it's a fucking awesome movie. I love Bloodsport. It's been a while since I watched it, but this is the worst acting in the entire film. It's about 30 minutes in where this scene that Chad's talking about happens. The the Hassan guy and and uh, and uh, what's his name um, uh, Jean Claude Ducks. Van Damme Jean Claude Van Damme yeah <laughs> yes are having their little thing and they're they're fighting over the girl and he wants to take Janice the reporter up to his room and then wants to take her up he's forcing her he's like come on you're going with me up to the room right and then Van Damme steps in and is like hey what is the problem guys let me do something else let me put quarter in your hand and if you cannot yeah. catch it before i snatch it then i get the girl yeah. and she's like wait what what yeah. the fuck's going on here and he winks at her and is like don't worry i got yeah. this under control the, the sexual harassment that i'm doing will work in your favor well Trust she, he me. also Trust says me. hey guys is it actually worth it for her like that yeah. she's like oh you yeah but <laughs> But the line that she's saying, there's one point where she says, this is the line. Look, guys, let's just calm down, okay? I've got it written down here. She goes, look, guys, let's just calm down, okay? She's halfway through that line. She goes, look, guys, let's just... Hassan looks right into the camera for some reason and goes, no. And she continues with calm down, okay? Not only is he fucking cutting her line off, they have to leave it in, Yeah. but he also looks right, no, into the camera and the thing is, like, even though, again, it's a martial arts movie. It's a fucking kung fu movie. I get it. You don't have time for one more take? Camera's already fucking pointing that way. It's a free one, as they call it. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, the stuff. acting is not great, no, obviously. It's, it's awesome because it, it adds this fucking richness to right. it that is that you can't find <laughs> in a lot of movies. Look. That also, when he's like, well, I will, you know, if you go for dinner with me tonight, they go for dinner. Yeah. They're just walking and laughing. And he goes, so what do you do? Like, they've had this whole evening and yeah. he doesn't even know. He's like, my sexual harassment did save you from the other <laughs> sexual harassment. Now we can have dinner. Yes. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I guess so. But it's ulterior motive because she she's a reporter trying to cover Kumite. Right. She knows he fights in it. So she's like, I'll go out to dinner with you. But you got to tell me about uh, the Kumite. And then we get this scene where he's doing meditation in the splits. And um, we've seen him do the splits in the training montage. The splits yeah. became his signature in all of his movies, yeah. even in his, in his first one, which I believe is called Black Eagle. He did the splits on two oil barrels, throwing a fucking knife into a board. That was his, uh, his kind of like trademarked move. And then ultimately we get the first fight. Wait, wait, before you go there, yeah. while he's doing the splits, Donald Gibb, wa Ogre walks in and goes, yeah. wow, awesome. Yeah. You awaken there, Frankie. Hey, what's going on? Frankie, what are you doing, Frankie? Or is that Frankie? Frankie, let are let you me... doing the splits, Frankie? Frankie. <laughs> Frankie, he's my friend. I'll Frankie. drink to that, Frankie. Frankie, what hey, are you doing, Frankie? Frankie. All right. Hey, that, Frankie. That's my buddy. And he's drinking a beer. Uh, Gib is drinking a beer basically in every scene, even in one later where he's in the fucking hospital. Yeah. <laughs> Which yep. is absolutely fantastic. Before you go on with this breakdown, I just yeah. have to ask you. I know you've seen, I know you know every scene in this movie front to back. Yeah. Are you going to review every single fight in this? In this? No. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> okay. So we get Freddie Lynn explaining to the guys at the, the rules, basically. You can either knock somebody out, throw them off the runway, or make them say mate, which is like saying uncle. And we see uh, at the end of a fight, time flashes up. So we know that there's going to be time knockouts. And these kind of like names are flashing up on these cards. This person versus this person, very much like Street Fighter 2. And we see a bunch of different fights, including one with Chong Lee for the first time. We learn this guy has never, this is Bully Young. He's never been defeated. Fastest KO, holds all these records. And he's even fucking killed someone in the ring. So this is our main bad guy. And we see Van Damme fights against the guy that he... Uh, did a better sexual harassment against and he wins that fight and then we get this big montage of fights and we see the cops now are, the local cops are meeting up with Forrest Whitaker and his partner to tell him where Dukes is staying at this hotel they, come, they go there and they try to take him back and this is where we get the, the montage of Van Damme running around the city doing a Mentos commercial to evade them then ultimately 
he winds up eating dinner with, again, the only woman in the movie, this reporter. And she says she wants to get in the Kumite for a story, but she really wants to get to know him. Then they fuck. Then she shows up at the Kumite the next day yeah. as some other guy's date. And is like, girl's got to do what a girl's got to do yeah. to get her fucking story. Yeah. And we're back in another fight montage. Van Damme is winning. Chong Lee is beating all these other guys. Uh, and the reporter is taking notes. She literally takes out a fucking recorder and is like, oh my God, the Kumite is going on. No one gives a shit. This yeah. is like this big secret underground fight. She's making open notes of it. And then we see basically Van Damme continuing. We see next the big fight between Gib and Chong Lee. And Van Damme tells him, go for Chong Lee's stomach. Stay away from his right leg. Gib gets in this lucky shot, celebrates prematurely, then gets his ass kicked and his head stomped by Chong Lee to such a degree he's going to have to go to the hospital. And right. Chong Lee steals his coveted Harley Davidson bandana, Lee, taunts it Chong in Lee, fucking uh, Van Damme's face. Chong Lee. And then in the hospital gives in a coma possibly, but the doctor says he'll be okay out of there in a week. And now Van Damme's new girlfriend, the only woman in the movie again, wants him to pull out of the tournament so he doesn't get hurt like Gib. She doesn't get why he wants to fight. And uh, then the reporter goes to the local authorities and asks him to shut down the Kumite so Van Damme won't get hurt. And she tells him, she tells them his name. And so then we get uh, this Van Damme lonely night montage where he's riding around wait, a bus wait, in the streets of Hong Kong. Hold on a second. Yeah. There's, two, there's two ladies in the movie. Oh. Yeah. Who's the other one? The, the, the lady on the bus. Oh, yeah. The, it's, is it the same one from when Ogre sexually harassed her in the that's, beginning? That's I don't who, know. No, no, no. I'm Maybe. saying those are the two women in the movie. Oh, yes, that's true. But Van Damme's riding around at night thinking about how Gib got hurt and he's seeing Chong Lee and reflections in the windows and shit. And then on his way to the Kumite, the feds show up. This is right before the final fights uh, with the local authorities. And he beats the shit out of about 15 Hong Kong policemen. Yeah. And that's it. That convinced him. Let him fight. Yeah. They don't put him in jail. They don't fucking arrest him. They're just like, well, he did kick the shit out of us. Yeah. All right. You can have your last fight. And of course, he goes in. He fights Chong Lee. Uh, in this final fight, and we see that Chong Lee cheats to try and win. He has this crushed up pill in his waistband, and he throws this dust in Van Damme's eyes. And this is where we get, at least in my opinion, some of the most important cinematic work of the movie. These super slow-mo shots of Van Damme blinded by this dust, going, ah, like flipping yeah. his hands around, doing all kinds of weird shit. Those become iconic moments in the movie. And then in the final piece of this, we see Van Damme do his signature helicopter kick, and they repeat the action in three separate shots, the same action, three times in a row, the same kick. And I remember as a kid seeing that, it was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. It broke kayfabe, if you will. It broke the narrative structure of the movie, because you're seeing the same action repeated again in a very kind of like MTV-esque editing style, and that would go on to be repeated in almost every movie Van Damme did with his big kind of signature kicks. But that was the first time I ever saw it. Of course, he wins the tournament. He gets Gib back his fucking uh, bandana. And then we see a freeze frame at the end of the movie after he does like a, a fucking karate bow to the only woman in the movie on the tarmac. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. He just, he, he, they, he's like, thanks for the sex. And he just goes like, they do the, the, the karate bow. Yeah. They hung out for like three days. Yeah. And then, you know, she provided some companionship. And right. then uh, she's just like outside a, a GMC Jimmy, like waving him off, like, take it easy. Yeah. See Thank you, later, you for fucking. And she's like, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and then we see this freeze frame that says this motion picture is based on the true life events of Frank Dukes. From 1975 to 1980, he fought 320 329 matches in the Kumite and retired undefeated. He has basically all the fucking records, fastest knockout with hands, kicks, whatever, whatever. 56 consecutive knockouts in a single tournament. Yeah. And he founded the first American ninjutsu system, Duke's Ryan Ninjutsu. Uh, what else can be said about this movie other than it was so fucking formative? I feel like I don't think I'm the only person who feels this way about this movie. It was um, what I would watch. Almost every time, if you're in Blockbuster and you're just like, I don't know what to rent. Yeah. It's Bloodsport again. Um, this is an extremely, uh, extremely watchable movie. And I will say, I didn't know that Frank Ducks was a real dude. Yeah. It makes it all the more richer. If you, if you have the means, and everyone does, because the internet, watch this movie and don't, don't come to it with like sort of, ah, this cheesy, weird fucking movie. Go into it wanting to appreciate this film. It's one of the best. It, it it's one really of the best movies like, of its era. 
And in terms of martial arts movies, I just remember it elevated the fucking game so much. Yeah. Like I said, I had never seen that like repeated fucking uh, martial arts move. So many things were done in slow mo and shot from kind of like weird low angles and stuff. The way they shot the Kumite, yeah. I had just never seen anything like it. And now it's like old hat, whatever. We've got fucking Marvel movies and Matrix Bullet Time and like a million special effects to make all the fight scenes crazy. There's no fucking special effects in this. Yeah. This is all practical shit, all real martial artists. And up until that time, at least for me, it was like the closest thing that looked like real martial artists fighting that existed until yeah. eventually UFC kind of comes out and shows you like what would really happen mm -hmm. if like a fucking sumo guy would go against a fucking kung fu guy or well, whatever. Get you kick, know? kicked in the face 80 times and lose. <laughs> Which is exactly what happened. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Fuck. Moving on. Great fucking movie. Oh, Great loved fucking it. movie. Paris I would watch it again. I would do this again. We should do that. I hope dudes he makes it <laughs> Let's do it again next Our week. Our next assignment is to watch Bloodsport again. Just In an effort to secure sponsorship, I have created several advertisements for various possible brand partnerships. Will Sasso, that. you will now read these advertisements in the astonishing voice of Jesse Ventura. This is Jesse Ventura. Ad reads. Begin. All right. Uh, good times. This is the Jesse Ventura ad reads, right? Uh, yeah. I guess we'll just, That's I guess right. I'll just do them. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. Wrong thing. Papia. Okay. Papia's <laughs> proud. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I held my breath underwater for. I fought Bob Backlund when I just got a Minnesota. But I'm the <laughs> governor of Minnesota. Get All into right. it. Papia is proud to present the new Pinkaholic nut line. <clears throat> Papia is proud to present the new Pinkaholic line of harnesses and accessories for the dog in your life. Whether you have a teacup Yorkie Spaniel or a brontosaurus-sized pit mastiff who puts your bowel movements to shame, <coughs> your pooch deserves to be slathered in pink. So fabulous, you'll want to wear it yourself. Pinkaholic, get in the zone. Well, let me tell you about the color pink. In 1975, the CIA began experimenting with various pigments made from rare materials harvested from around the globe at great taxpayer <laughs> expense. In an attempt to produce a pink tone that could absorb all light, effectively becoming invisible. <laughs> they called it null pink. And <laughs> they called it they called it Null Pink, and they produced 47 gallons of it. Then they shipped it from a lab in the U.S. Navy headquarters. They shipped it from the lab to the new... They shipped it from the lab to the U.S. Navy headquarters in Washington, but the shipment never arrived. The CIA scuttled the project, and those gallons <laughs> of Null Pink were never recovered, at least... Not in the official log. Okay. So unless your dog is wearing an invisible collar, I don't really give a shit what kind of pink it's wearing. Uh -oh. All right. All right. That's uh Is that I don't think null pink is a I've never heard of that, have you? No, I don't know what null pink is. That sounds like that sounds like a thing. Well, it's a Jesse Ventura thing, so who yeah. knows? Well, doozy found it somewhere. Um, do you think we'll get uh, perhaps a sponsorship from uh, Puppy Eye? I know that Lulio has a Puppy a harness. Does he really? He does. You're already a Puppy a customer? He's a Puppy a pup. Most cold brew can be overpriced and quite frankly, not that tasty. <laughs> That's why okay. two roommates, Andrew and Alex, brewed up an idea to start their, old, their own cold brew company. And they called it busy organic cold brew in their cramped apartment in 2013 and for the past nine years they've strived to make their coffee better every day and now they're proud to present busy organic breakfast blend coffee brew busy coffee for busy people get busy with it <laughs> busy is as busy does the busier the bee the sweeter the busy coffee. Being busy is our business. What? Busy bossy, de biz with busy. What? 
busy organic cold brew is deliciously roasted cold brew coffee, <laughs> micro brewed for 18 hours to yield the perfect extraction. Well, let me tell you about the perfect extraction. <laughs> Oh, Osama God. bin Laden wasn't <laughs> just killed by SEAL Team 6. There were five other teams. But oh. what happened to team what to teams 1 through 5? How did they get out? Why do we never hear about them? It's because they were coated in null It's because they were coated in null pink. <laughs> Completely invisible, and the CIA has been placing null pink operatives in every in every crisis center around the globe for the last fifty years. There are invisible specters walking amongst us. Next time you feel that tingling sensation, like someone's in the room with you, it's because they are. Null pinks are notorious for silently watching civilians while they eat and sleep. The next sip of busy cold brew you take may be your last. Jesus Christ. All right. Pretty good. USDA choice, tr- USDA choice trim tri-tip roast is on sale at Ralph's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mouthwatering tri-tip is only four ninety nine a pound with your Ralph's Club card. <laughs> Ralph's, we're your USDA choice trim tri-tip headquarters. Ralph's, you've died and gone to USDA choice trim tri-tip heaven. (laughs) Ralph's, the USDA choice trimmed tri-tip. It's what's for dinner. Ralph's, let me give you a tip. A USDA choice trimmed (laughs) tri-tip. Here we go. Well, let me tell you about choices, or should I say lack thereof. Some of the null pinks had families who also had to become null pinks. It was it was too much of a risk to have wives and children snooping around, so the CIA indoctrinated them as operatives too. And now, anytime a null pink is born, they're born into active operative st- operative status. There are null pink babies spying on babies of various U.S. political <coughs> adversaries around the globe as we speak. So the next time you hear someone casually say, Oh, he or she is as innocent as a baby. Ask that person what kind of baby they're referring to, because if it's a null pink baby, it's not innocent. (laughs) The next USDA choice trim tri-tip you eat may be your last. (laughs) No matter what... (laughs) No what... No matter what kind of plug-and-play spa you have in mind, AquaRest has you covered. Whether it's the premium 154-person plug-and-play with 12 stainless jets, ozone, and LED waterfall, or the premium 600 six-person plug-and-play with with 29 stainless jets, ozone, and LED waterfall, or even the Daydream 4500 six-person 45-jet plug-and-play hot tub with waterfall where your one-stop shop for multi-jet four- to six-person <laughs> plug-and-play spas. <laughs> well, let me tell you about one-stop shops. In the mid-1990s, an ex-CIA agent who worked on the Null Pink Project began selling certain items he'd acquired over time to the highest bidders all done discreetly in the highest channels of power in the world, of course. Right now, there are several celebrities in possession of various quantities of null pink. Sarah Jessica Parker has five ounces. (laughs) Timothy Chalamet has a pint. (laughs) LeBron James has some. (laughs) Pete Davidson, Jason Momoa, (laughs) Kim Carnes. Danny DeVito, <laughs> Megan the <Thee> Stallion, <laughs> Kathy Lee Gifford, Cristiano Ronaldo, Little Nas X, the leader of Def Leppard, the lead singer of Def Leppard, Albert Pujols, and the list goes on and on. 
So what are these celebrities doing with their null pink? No one has any idea except for the null pinks themselves watching every move. So get a plug and play spa and pretend that Paul Giamatti isn't throwing an invisible sex party in the Hollywood Hills on the last Thursday of every month. <laughs> That's Paul Giamatti has the ability to turn people invisible and he's using it to have invisible sex parties. <laughs> Makes sense. Billabong's air light engineered performance board shorts are made with award winning air light technology that brings three engineered fabrics together, giving you flexibility, stability, and comfort where you need it most. Billabong, life's better in board shorts. Billabong. <coughs> <laughs> Billabong, life's better in board shorts. Billabong, <laughs> building buildings all day long. <laughs> billabong, billadong, billabong, billadong. <laughs> billabong, billa, 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 bong, bong, bong. <laughs> well, let me tell you about a bong. Tommy Chong was sentenced to nine months in a federal prison in 2003 for selling a water bong. Many people thought this sentence was too harsh, but what most people don't know is that it would have been much worse if the Drug Enforcement Agency had found the other drug paraphernalia he was selling, but Chong coated it in null pink <laughs> and it was undetectable. No. And now somewhere there's a landfill with two tons of Tommy Chong's invisible bongs just waiting for someone to dig them up. If Billabong really wants to sell board shorts, they should be running a contest. Whoever buys the most board shorts gets to be the subject of a six-part docu-series <laughs> called... <laughs> the six-part docu-series called Finding Tommy Chong's Invisible Bongs in Billabongs. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Holy oh shit. Oh my god, dude. I'm yeah. fucking sweating from yeah. that. Oh, Jesse no Ventura. pink. Dude, I've never heard of that. I don't that's think not that's not a thing. No, that's not a thing. I I never heard of it, but I figured it was a thing and after we got through them I realized billa, that's billa, not a billa, thing. Billa, bong, 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 bong. bong. No. They don't really use that as a slogan. Thank slug you. They're fucking Moving up. on. Holy this concludes shit. the historic 27th episode huh. of Dude C. We did it. Not really. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 99, bringing your cumulative total to 3,376. Couldn't matter any You less. only have 6,624 more points to accrue before you reach your first astonishing goal of 10,000. Terrifying. Right. Okay. In preparation for Good next man. week, you must watch the first Ultimate Fighting Championship that Holy took place shit. November 12th. 2003 in Denver, Colorado. Okay. And you must do it in a live stream that will be available Wednesday on Patreon at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you for joining us this week. I will use the data I've collected to make next week even better. Until then, call me Dude Z. Okay, cool. We're going to do a live stream on Patreon on Wednesday right. at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific uh, Eat. 8 p.m. Eastern. What the fuck, dude? 8 p.m. Eastern, right? 8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We're going to... All right, we're really rolling through this Patreon thing and, and things That's are happening. So join us on Patreon for that. We are going to watch the first UFC have paper. Have seen it ever? I have seen it. I so remember I. going to a bar with my buddy Mo, uh -huh. uh, and we went and watched it. When and you were 12 or what? No, it would have been like 17 or something, right? It was 93. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you would have been, yeah, it would have been 17, 17 18. Were we really that old? Yeah, you In were my 17. head, I was like 10. No, you were like 16 or 17. Time flies when it doesn't exist, brother. Well, hold on, dude. Uh, and it's going to be on Patreon. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You want to, maybe you should, you think dudes, you'll make a smoke a little pot? Get your pot and uh, watch the show with us. I think it might spark up. Lulu's oh, yeah. not, Lulu is not invited. All right. By the way, yeah, I that'll be fun, dude. Like I haven't seen the first one in a long fucking time. Yeah. I just remember uh, kickboxer Pat Smith. Yeah. And I don't know if this was one or two. And then some, like, um, you know, this, like, dude from Calgary, this, like, very Canadian guy with, like, a fucking orange handlebar mustache. And uh, he was a jujitsu guy. He had like think. a bunch of disciplines of martial arts. Yeah. And then as soon as they're like, are you ready? 
are you ready? Let's get it on. And the guy, just all of that knowledge and years of training spilled from him. And he went, and ran at Pat Smith, who like just jumped out of the way and kicked him in the fucking teeth and then got on top of him, just started giving yeah. him the fucking gears, the elbows, and smashed his face up. Uh, Donald Those first Gibbs ones style. were rough, dude, because also dude. The, the refs didn't like stop shit, really. Nope. Dudes nope. were just getting fucking pummeled. Do you remember Chemo getting his yeah. his ponytail pulled off? Chemo. Chemo who came in on like a big fucking cross because yeah, he was like fighting for Jesus. Yeah. And then, remember uh, that guy. And then uh, didn't someone else get just punched in the nuts over and over again? Tank Abbott. Someone that, was Tank Abbott didn't come until like UFC 3 or 4, But I just I think. remember someone punching Tank Abbott in the nuts over and over again. I don't again. think it was Tank Abbott that got punched in the nuts, but I do remember that nut punch shit. Yeah. And now for the Patreon bonus segment. All right. Each week, I will select a suggestion submitted in the Dude Z is listening channel of the Dude Z Discord to create this segment. Access to this channel is granted to everyone in the Patreon jumper tier. This week's segment was suggested by the astonishing Dave Chill Squeed. Dave Chill Squeed wrote, Nostra Chattis pitches which current industries will become obsolete and what will replace them. Alex Jones will then tell us the real story behind those paradigm shifts. Dave Chill Squeed titled this segment Jonesin for the Future. Thank you to Dave Chill Squeed for this week's Patreon bonus segment. This is Jonesin for the Future by Dave Chill Squeed. <laughs> Begin. Dave Chill Squeed. J Dave, Dave Chill, Chill Squeed is a guy? That's a person? I guess so. Okay, uh, so that's someone in our jumper tier who on Discord has suggested this thing. Jones so for the future. So we're gonna I'm get going into to... this and, and for everyone who's who's uh not on the Patreon, you can listen to this segment on the Patreon. Thank you so much for joining us on Dudesy and uh and we hope that you that you join us on Patreon to watch the first UFC uh tomorrow. Yeah. Um five PM PST. Live five PM PST. All right. So, so let's what discuss is we have to discuss industries that are going to be uh, rendered obsolete, and then I have, to, and then Alex Jones chimes in with, "Sure, I mean, first industry that's going to be rendered obsolete, I think." Okay. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then.